Really good to see you this week. The video and subject today is something that's really near and dear to my heart. It's about overcoming fear, in particular, when we're talking about our hair. <laughs> it's amazing how the fear of change in this department can be so profound, crippling in fact, and it has been my mission on this platform to show you and basically lead by example that change is not to be feared. It is to be celebrated and embraced for a variety of reasons. It transcends, it is transformative, and it leads to other areas in our lives. So today's video is about five strategies to look fear head on and to get real about its roots. No pun intended. Now let me tell you, I feel like I'm sort of leading by example, and my story dates back to my middle school years. In fact, a trauma <laughs> that happened to me in middle school. I was about 12 or 13, and my natural hair color is a medium to dark ash brown. I don't have a lick of gold, I don't have any red, I am just as flat of a brown as you can possibly get. So. Every summer, my mom and I would always go down to Galveston and hang out on the beach. And one weekend, we invited a girlfriend of mine to come along. And before that trip, I went to my local pharmacy and I grabbed two bottles of Sun In. Maybe you can remember back in the day, that was the spray that you would put all over your hair and it would supposedly give you these fabulous blonde streaks. So I was determined to get those fabulous blonde streaks in one day at the beach. So we head down to Galveston. We're out there all day playing in the sand and the sun. And I decide to accelerate the process. So I take these two bottles and I just dump. <laughs> pour it all over my hair, let it sink in, comb it through. I'm in the sun, I'm in the ocean, I'm basking. And so now comes the big reveal. And I will never forget on the way home, my mom and my girlfriend was in the passenger seat and I sat in the back seat and I could see my reflection in the rear view mirror. And I was watching my hair process as we were driving home and it was getting orange and orangier and more orange and I'm watching in horror and I can see my mother doing one of these. She's looking at the rear view mirror, looking ahead, looking in the mirror because she can see my reflection and what's going on. At any rate, by the time we get back home and I wash it and blow dry it, I am a shade of bright orange. I march myself back over to the pharmacy where I bought the product and the, the ladies who work there looked at me in horror as I was combing through the box color and they said, darling, I don't think I'd put any more color on that hair. It might fall out. So I took their words of advice and I just let it be. And that was my first experimentation with hair color and a bad job at that. And I had to learn to deal with it and process and let it grow out before I could actually do something with it. I learned a lot about myself in that process. I learned a lot about how I define beauty, how I see myself, overcoming challenges, change. There was a lot of wisdom that happened to that 12 or 13 year old girl at the time. And I really do believe that that moment paved the way for me to try and experiment because in the overcoming process, I realized that even though I didn't like it, uh, even though I got teased about it, it wasn't as bad as my imagination made it out to be. And my eyes settled over time and it just, it was a lesson in overcoming and dealing with change. And it really opened the door for me to embrace more change and to try and do things. So I wanna share with you my top five strategies in dealing with change, especially when it comes to our hair, because we tie up so much of our beauty and how we see ourselves as beautiful or not based on how our hair is performing or not. So. Let's really start from scratch here and get to the basis of what are you truly afraid of? That's number one. We all have to ask ourselves, what are we afraid of? Are we defining our entire beauty in our hair? Are we afraid of not being beautiful in our own eyes or those that we love, of not being accepted, of being critiqued, of feeling like we made a mistake? We really need to look at how we're defining ourselves and how we're letting others define us. That is the barrier first and foremost, to taking the leap of doing anything when it comes to our personal change. 
we tend to give too much thought and too much credence to what other people think. And that's a barrier that we have to break down in order to get out there to try and experiment. We also need to loosen our own boundaries and we really do bound ourselves with our own thought process of how we see ourselves as beautiful or not, how we accept change or not. And sometimes we get a very limited view of what that looks like and what we should look like. And we really don't know what's out there until we try, we experiment, and we change. So we are really limiting. And you know, it may sound so superficial here just talking about hair, but let me tell you something. Change in this area is profound. And I have seen time and time again when women have made that bold leap and tried something different, how that change parlayed the way for change in other areas, in deeper areas, more meaningful areas. It was like the kickstart to something really big and amazing that happened. But it sometimes takes that questioning and analyzing of what are we so afraid of? How are we defining ourselves? And are we really limiting our definition of ourselves and our beauty with our thought process? So that's number one. Number two, only with risk can there be reward. Lord knows I've taken a lot of risk in my life, both personally, professionally, in terms of physical appearance. You know, playing it safe might be comfortable, but it can really lead to complacency. And and that safe zone and that comfort zone doesn't lead to a real creative zone. And so I find that a lot of women over time feel dull. They don't feel sharp anymore. They feel like their edges are soft. And that's because of the choices to stay where it's safe and where it's comfortable. Yeah, it's predictable. Yeah, there are no surprises or challenges, but it leaves you feeling very unfulfilled and a little bit dull. And then on top of it, there may be a lot of self-talk going on here of, well, I don't have the hair to do that. I don't have the face for that. I don't have the body for that. So we continue to play it safe based on what our image is about ourselves. And are you really happy where you are? That's what you have to ask yourself. Or do you feel stuck based on these parameters? So we really must accept the fact that reward does come from risk taking. And so I ask you to analyze areas of your life where you have taken some risk, how that felt, and what rewards did you reap from that risk taking. And maybe it's time to try that in the area of hair and to see where the risk will take you. Now, like I say, you reap reward with risk. Well, number three is, with risk, yes, there can be failure. And this, number three, is what stops people really from making that leap and from deciding to go, is because we know that the potential for failure is there. You won't like it. Well, the question that I ask you is, what lessons will you learn from not liking it? What coping mechanisms will you develop from not liking it? Will you develop character? and strategies in how to deal with it? Will you learn how to give yourself some positive self-talk and maybe change your value system of how you see yourself because you don't like it? The other thing too is we've gotta be realistic about the risk that we're taking. We're not setting a course on a new career or making a big family move, we're talking about a hairstyle change. So let's keep it in perspective here. It's hair and it will grow. And my theory has always been, let's say you took the risk and you don't like it, maybe in that grow out phase, you find the perfect look for you and you never would have known had you not taken that risk in the first place. So risk is important, failure is important too. We learn a lot about ourselves in those darker hours. And I think the coping mechanisms and those skills shape character, and they also help you redefine how you see yourself and what you deem to be beautiful. Number four is beauty is in the eye of every beholder. This is an interesting one because you may hate it and others may love it. You may love it and others may hate it. 
People see themselves through you, and I have a perfect example of this. Recently, I posted on my social media channels uh, the fact that my husband and I attended the ballet ball through the years. So it was about a decade's worth of photos showing us at ballet balls year after year. And so you could see physical changes, longer hair, shorter hair, short hair, lighter hair, darker hair. And it's funny, everybody naturally, we instinctively want to share what we like or what we don't like. So immediately came the comments, oh, I love the 2012 hair. Oh, you should let your hair grow longer. Oh, I like the current hair, very Charlize Theron. Oh, I like this, I like that. And it's here's something very interesting. I've noticed based on people's profile pictures, what they like in me reflects what they look like. So we tend to seek like-minded beauty. So when my hair was blonde and longer, people with longer and lighter hair really like that look. When my hair is shorter and darker, people with shorter hair really like this look. And so it's an identifier and people identify with what they like and how they see themselves and, and how they see beauty in themselves. So this is really an opportunity, in my opinion, to see yourself differently. You are not defined by a single hairstyle. I have never felt that I am defined by a single hairstyle. There are a couple of jokes that go around. My general manager at my TV station always replies to people who call in and comment about my hair. He says, well, if you don't like it, it'll be different in six months. And that's very true. And my husband jokes, well, I've got a new girlfriend every six months. And yes, that's true, but that's me. And because for me, the fear isn't there, because for me, I see hair as more of artistry in the way that an artist would approach a canvas. It's an opportunity for something new, creative, and different every single day. I may be very different from everybody else and from you in terms of how you see it, but what I'm hoping to do here, because of this sort of openness and willing, willingness to experiment, I'm hoping that I show you that it really isn't something to be feared, that change is easy, change can be good, change can teach you a lot about yourself, and sometimes it's what we need to kickstart change in other areas of our lives. So again, beauty in the eye of every beholder, and that includes you too. And number five on my list, celebrate the leap that you took off of the high dive. Think about this. When it comes to change, to me, the high dive is the, the perfect analogy, right? We say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump off of that high dive. And you're climbing up the ladder and you're thinking, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm going to do it. I'm really doing it. I'm climbing up. And then you get up to that platform and you're out there and you're looking down thinking, oh, I can't do this. This is too high. There's no way. There's no way. And you walk out and then you see the water below. No way, I can't do it. And then you walk back and then comes all this self-talk back and forth as you walk up and down the plank. I can do it, I can't do it. I can do it, I can't do it. Finally, you get to the edge and you say, okay, I'm going to do this. And you look down and you close your eyes and you hold your breath and you take that leap and it seems like forever until your feet hit the water and the pit of your stomach is up in your head. And finally you hit and in you go and out you pop up feeling exhilarated and accomplished for actually doing it. And then you turn around and you look up at that high dive and suddenly it doesn't look so bad after all. Suddenly the perspective, it seems so much closer than it really was and you actually think, hmm, I might get up there and do it again. That's the kind of celebration that I'm talking about. It's the risk that you took, no matter the outcome, no matter how you feel about it, you did it. And celebrating that in my eyes is so important and that you realize it wasn't so bad after all. Like I said, risk taking to me, there are so many examples that I could get into, but, but it was those defining moments in my life where change, profound change happened, good or bad. And I learned through all of it. I became a better person through all of it. I became a more open and accepting person. I became a more experimental and trying person. I became somebody who wasn't rigid and regimented, somebody who um, really 
learned a lot about herself and wants to share those lessons of life's big leaps and where they might lead. And so while this conversation focuses on hair, I really think you're getting the picture here that it's about so much more. But if this is your starting point, then let it be your starting point. If it's makeup or wardrobe changes, let it be your starting point. But, but hair to me is that big definer. It is something that women fear, celebrate, and loathe all at the same time. It is something that we have let define us in terms of beauty. And I'm here to argue that there are many ways to define beauty. It really depends on how open you are and willing you are to allow those definitions to play out. I hope this video has been helpful in some way, just maybe kind of grease the wheels, got you thinking about things a little differently. I'm not here to tell everybody to go out and cut their hair off. I am here to say to you that if change is something that you've been wanting in that area, to look at yourself with a objective viewpoint, to analyze what's been holding you back, and to see if taking that leap off the high dive is worth it. And who knows where it might lead? Who knows the depths of the ocean that it takes you? But it sure can be exciting finding out. So with whatever big, bold move you make, as always, my message here is to be bold and you will be blessed. And I will see you next Thursday at one o'clock. Thank you for being here.